Moving on to the next concept, we're going to talk about the sustainable growth rate. And what this sustainable growth rate means is basically the growth rate a firm can maintain with a constant debt to equity ratio and no external equity issue. So I'm going to illustrate how the sustainable growth rate works through an example. So we have a company here. Here it's its most recent financial statements. So we have the income statement with sales of 15,000, cost of 6,000, and then net income of 9,000. And then a balance sheet, the assets total 100,000, debt is 20,000, equity is 80,000, and both sides balance. Now, in addition to the financial statements, there's this other information provided. So assets and costs are proportionate to sales, debt and equity are not, and a dividend of 2,700 on this 9,000 net income was paid, and the company wishes to maintain a constant payout ratio. Now, if you'd rather not write all of this out, I put a link to lecture notes in the description box where this whole question is written out and other examples that we're doing in this chapter. So you can print those out for convenience. And the question we have to answer for this company is what growth rate can they achieve while still maintaining that constant debt to equity ratio and not issuing any new external equity. So the answer to that is that we have to calculate its sustainable growth rate. But before calculating that, let's calculate the company's payout ratio and their retention ratio, which we can do by finding or using the net income and the dividend of 2,700 that was just paid. So $9,000 net income, 2,700 was paid out as a dividend. That means 6,300 was retained in the company for growth. So the payout ratio, as we know, is dividends over net income. So it would be 2,700 over that net income of 9,000. And when you divide both of those, you would get 0.3 or a 30% payout ratio. And similarly, for the retention ratio, we take the re retained earnings of 6,300 divided by the net income of 9,000 and we would get 0.7 or 70%. So all of uh, the company's net income, 30% it's paid out as a dividend, 70% is retained in the company for growth, and the company wants to maintain those ratios in the future. Now let's get into talking about how to calculate the sustainable growth rate. So the sustainable growth rate, which I denoted as SGR here, is equal to the return on equity times the retention ratio all over one minus the return on equity times the retention ratio. So it's very similar to the internal growth rate. The only difference is that instead of return on assets that was shown in the internal growth rate formula, we now have return on equity instead. And the return on equity, we can easily calculate with this formula, the net income over the equity. So the net income we get from the income statement of 9,000, the equity we would get from the balance sheet of 80,000, Dividing those two numbers, we would get 0.1125 or 11.25% for the return on equity ratio. So then taking this return on equity and retention ratio, plugging it into the formula. So return on equity times the retention ratio. Remember, you always have to keep them in decimals as we did in the internal growth rate. All over one minus the return on equity times the retention ratio, we would get a value of 0.0854. Eight or 8.548 percent. So that is the maximum growth this company can maintain with a constant debt to equity ratio and no external equity issued. So now let's actually show how this sustainable growth rate will work with financial statements. So let's take this company, Let's grow it by this rate, create some pro forma financial statements, and let's see what happens. And we'll also, within that example, get into a little bit more detail talking about what this constant debt to equity ratio means. We haven't really talked about that too much. And all of this will be better explained through the example. So starting off with the pro forma income statement, the sales figure, we're going to grow by the sustainable growth rate. So we'll take that previous sales figure of $15,000 multiplied by 1.08548, and when you input that in your calculator, you would get $16,282. So that is the forecasted sales for the next period. Next up is the costs, and costs are told to vary with sales. They're proportionate to sales, so they're also gonna grow at the sustainable growth rate. So we would take our previous cost figure of 6,000 multiplied by 1.08548, and we would get a new cost figure of $6,513. So that would go here. 
and then subtracting the cost from the sales, we get a final net income figure of $9,769. Now, if you remember, we calculated the payout ratio from the previous financial statements of the company to be 30%. So we know that 30% of this net income is going to be paid out as dividends. And we can actually calculate that amount by taking the net income and multiplying it by 0.3, which is 30%. So we would get a dividend amount of $2,931. So from a net income of 9769 30% is this dividend figure that the company is forecasted to pay. Now let's get into making the pro forma balance sheet. So we know that the assets vary with sales, so they're proportionate, so they're also going to grow by the sustainable growth rate. So then taking that previous asset figure of 100,000 and then growing it at the sustainable growth rate, we would get a new asset figure of $108,548. Now let's figure out the right side of the balance sheet. So the debt figure, let's leave that for last actually. And what about the equity? Well, if you remember the initial goal of this question, is to grow the company at a sustainable growth rate, meaning that the debt to equity ratio has to stay constant and there's no new equity issued. And because no new equity is issued, we know that any increase in equity has to come from retained earnings. So we can find what the ending equity amount would be that would go here from this formula that we've been using. So the beginning equity would be the previous balance. So, so 80,000 plus the net income of 9769 minus the dividends that were paid or that are for, forecasted to be paid of 2931. And when you net those numbers out, you would get a final equity amount of $86,838. So that would go here. So 86838. Eight, eight. And now we can finally figure out what the debt portion of the balance sheet will be. Now, if you remember, for previous examples, we've just been keeping that debt figure consistent. However, in this question, because we're dealing with the sustainable growth rate, it said that the firm can maintain a constant debt to equity ratio. And the reason why firms want to maintain a certain debt to equity ratio and not go over it is because debt is a lot more risky than equity because we have to pay that guaranteed interest to bondholders every period. So many times a company's financial policy will allow it to borrow more debt or take on more of the risky type of financing as long as it doesn't pass a certain capacity that is relative to equity. And in this specific example, we can find what the debt to equity ratio is from the balance sheet that we were given initially. So the debt is 20,000 over the equity of 80,000. So that gives us a debt to equity ratio of one over four or 0.25. So that means that the debt always has to be no more than 25% of the equity. So then using that debt to equity ratio, we can figure out what our max debt can be on the new pro forma balance sheet by taking the equity amount of 86,838 and multiplying it by 0.25 or figuring out what 25% of that new equity figure is. And that would be our new debt figure. So when you do that in your calculator, you would get $21,710. So the debt we can have at 21,710 and no more than that. And we're still maintaining our debt to equity ratio because if you take this figure over that figure, you would still get a debt to equity ratio of 0.25. And now notice when we balance those figures, so add up both sides of the balance sheet, we would get both sides balancing at 108,548. So we met our goal. Notice how there's no external financing needed because the left side is not greater than the right side. So we met our goal of growing our sales at 8.548% and not taking on any new equity. This equity was all internally produced with retained earnings. And then we were able, because we increased our equity and we can maintain a constant debt to equity ratio, we were able to take on a little bit more debt as well, specifically $1,710 more to maintain that debt to equity ratio of one over four and everything balanced nicely. So it seems like the sustainable growth rate, we just proved that it's a legitimate formula. Now, if you wanna prove this formula even further, 
try to maybe grow the same company at a rate that's greater than the sustainable growth rate. So I did an example here. What if we grew the company at 10% instead of that sustainable growth rate? So going through the same process, growing the sales, growing the cost, getting the net income, maintaining that constant payout ratio of 30%. So I'm not going to go through that, but I'll show you how this last balance sheet should look like. So the assets would grow to 110,000. The equity, if you take that new retain earnings figure and then add it to that equity of 80,000, you would get a new equity figure of 86,930. And since we're still maintaining that constant debt to equity ratio of one over four from the 20,000 and 80,000, if we take 25% of that new equity figure of 86,930, we would get a debt figure of 21,733. But then notice when we add up both sides, we would get 110,000 on the left side and only 108,663 on the right side. So then we're gonna need external financing of $1,337 from somewhere. We might have to take on more debt or take on more external equity. But doing one of those is gonna break the financial policy of the firm because if you remember, we shouldn't be issuing any external equity and we should only be taking on debt that is 25% or maintaining that constant uh, debt to equity ratio, 25% of equity. So the reason why we're breaking the firm's financial policy in this case is because we try to grow the firm at something that's larger than the sustainable growth rate of 8.548. So we tried to grow it at 10%. Again, I would highly suggest you pause the video and try to go through the process for the income statement and then end up getting this balance sheet just for practice. And then you'll notice that the figures don't balance. We need to get some kind of external financing from somewhere for all of this to make sense. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.